Apparently this is the month where everybody posts the results of reverse engineering every single Raspberry Pi. I covered the Raspberry Pi 02W a few days ago, and uh, just yesterday I noticed that TubeTime on Blue Sky has reverse engineered the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5. And uh, this is awesome, but I'm also a little sad because I've actually worked with LumaField to get scans of so many of these Raspberry Pi models, and I just haven't had time to actually like publish them and release them and everything. So I figured today I'm going to release all of these things because I don't want to have everybody wear down their fingertips sanding down all these different Raspberry Pis when I can give this uh, data to them to assist with things like reverse engineering the pinouts and the PCB schematics. So first of all, TubeTime posted all this stuff on Blue Sky, and uh, he was very gracious in giving all of this information in a GitHub repository. So if you wanted to reproduce the PCB for a CM5, you can do that. You can also uh, look in and see the pinouts, and if you're developing your own custom compute module-based board, uh, you can see where everything goes, even things that aren't well documented by Raspberry Pi themselves. Uh, he goes through the process, which is, I don't have the patience to do this stuff, but uh, he took off all the chips, he desoldered everything, he mapped out everything by hand on paper, he wet sanded, that means he takes the PCB with none of the chips on it, and he sits there and rubs it back and forth to get each layer of this PCB, and I think it's like 12 layers, and uh, each layer he'd sand it down, he'd scan it in in high resolution, and then he even measured the components, even some of the components that aren't labeled, so you don't know exactly what they are, like inductors, and he used an antennameter, a nano VNA, to uh, find out what the ferrite beads on the board, uh, what, what values they had. So he can reverse engineer even the power management circuit, which is something that's not well documented. And he sanded it down to the point where he could bend it, just like a flexible PCB, because it was so thin, probably only like one or two layers left. Uh, but here's a close-up look at one of those scans. Here's the schematic that he did. Here's the, uh, the layout of everything. So very cool, and, you know... <laughs> I mentioned right after that that I had actually worked with LumaField to, to uh, scan this thing, and this would have probably been very helpful. It's not, it's not perfect, it's not as good as you can get doing the actual physical device and sanding it, but you can go in here and get a lot of the trace data and the layout uh, very easily. And like I showed with the, the Pi Zero 2W, uh, LumaField has a pretty cool setup here where you can go in and you can go to each layer just by scrolling through it like this. Uh, you can get the, the components on the bottom side, uh, the different layers in the PCB here, and then scan through and see the, the SOC chip there and the Wi-Fi chip and the cover there. So they have a lot of cool tools on here to, uh, to get into each part of the board and check out what it's doing. This is the little Ethernet chip, the Broadcom controller. Uh, this is the, the SOC, the CPU here, and you can go in and see where the, the, like these are the pads on the board. You can inspect. The reason why these things are helpful, the reason why LumaField makes their machines and, uh, and has people use them is they can go in and inspect like the solder balls here and make sure that the soldering techniques they're using and the process and the reflow oven and all that are good. Uh, but on top of that, you can look inside of devices without taking them apart and see, you know, here's where the actual... Uh, SOC is on that little interposer board and all the little solder balls on it that connect it. And then here's all the traces that go out to the, the you know, the interposer that goes to the motherboard on the Pi. And uh, you can go through and see all the layers. So very cool stuff. Here's a, a close-up of the ball grid array for the processor. And again, this is where you can zoom in on this thing and you can inspect these solder balls and make sure that the solder is making good contact there's not any voids in it. And I'm going to share all these so that you can go in and explore them yourself in LumaField Voyager. Uh, somebody's also accused me of like shilling for LumaField. It's, no, I, I have actually paid for many different scans of things over the years with uh, Nikon and with other companies. And when I saw LumaField stuff, I was like, I really want to see if I can get their scans because it's so much easier to use this, this UI that they have than all the other UIs that I've seen in the past. Maybe there's some proprietary stuff that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars that's better than this. I don't know, but this is just... They've done a lot of great work helping people in the open source community especially to get scans of hardware uh, so you can see inside of things. So, no, I'm not shilling for them. Yes, these scans were provided for free. I shipped the stuff to them. I paid for shipping back. Um, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm very clear that, that uh, they've helped me with this, and I thank them for helping me with it. So... If you have any complaints about that, fire a complaint down in the comments, whatever. Uh, but I do have scans for other things too. So here's the Raspberry Pi 5. 
Uh, if anybody is reverse engineering this board, I will provide you this data now. And you can, you can go in and see the different parts of the board, go in here, and instead of sanding it down, if you need to see where a particular trace goes, this may help you. Uh, you might still want to sand things down if you need certain things, but uh, it's, it, this is extremely helpful for people that need this kind of data. And, uh, you know, we'll just pop through it really quick here. Again, if you're inspecting how many voids there are in these solder balls, uh, this is the kind of tool that can help with that. It's interesting too, when you have a larger pad like this, I've actually been reading up on when you're designing PCB reflow options and the materials that you use for your solder and the process you use, there's a lot of different uh, techniques that go into to try to make a very nice uniform soldering uh, job because you can't really get under this. You can't put hot air under it. So you have to have temperature profiles to reflow the solder correctly for a large pad like this. And this is not the largest pad ever. This is just, you know, this is just the underside of one chip. But if you have a lot of voids in your solder, if you're not doing the right technique or have bad materials, you can have big problems because the, the chip will overheat because it won't be able to sink all of its heat into the PCB. So anyway, that's just a, something that I'm still learning a lot about and will hopefully learn a lot more about, but here's the, uh, the Wi-Fi and the micro SD card slot and uh, the PMIC over here. And uh, here's the side with the connectors. It's always interesting seeing inside these things because y you could hack it apart and uh, see these things, but sometimes when you hack it apart, you break some stuff. But if you look in here at the inside of the ethernet port, you can see these little, these little inductors, I think they are. Uh, these are the magnetics inside of the port that help protect uh, your ethernet module inside the Pi from any weird voltages and spikes and things across the line and isolate it from power over ethernet so you don't fry any electronics. And uh, these also help isolate the signal. So those four pins for the, the power over ethernet on the Pi 5, those actually uh, are taken out through here and, and separate the AC and DC voltages used to power your Pi or if you're using PoE. These scans get you a lot of cool stuff that you might not see. Even if you tear it apart uh, yourself, it's hard to see some of the details. And these are the USB ports. They just have a lot of, uh, a lot of bendy bits on them. It is interesting to see the difference between the USB 3, which are larger, thicker traces, or I don't know if these aren't traces, larger, thicker contacts versus USB 2, which are bent and, and are a little thinner. Uh, but I don't know if that has more to do with like that particular model or if that's something with USB 3 versus USB 2. Um, but here's the fan connector, the metal parts on it. There's even, uh, these are just little, little standoffs that are added. These aren't actually part of any circuit. These are just standoffs so that when you set down a Raspberry Pi 5 on your desk, it doesn't contact any of the uh, circuits. These little standoffs help it uh, stay up on the desk. Uh, I have the CM5 here. I showed you that. I have the CM4 as well. So I will have this, uh, this will be published as well. So you can check out the CM4, even though it's a little bit older, it still is interesting to see changes uh, from form factor to form factor. Uh, so for instance, if I go here, you can see that on the CM4, the RAM was at the top here above the SOC. And on the CM5, the RAM is on the side over here. And I think this is just mapped out the same way as the Pi 5. That way, the, the board design for this part of the board at least can be pretty much identical between the Pi 5 and the CM5. Let's uh, check to make sure that's true. Yeah, so on the Pi 5, you can see that the, the memory is over here and the SOC is right here. Same thing on the CM5. And then we can check that on the CM4 versus the Pi 4 has the same thing. So the, the RAM is right up here, kind of above the SOC, and on here it's above the SOC as well. When looked at it from this perspective. Uh, but yeah, so there's the uh, PMIC for the Pi, the CM4, and down here it's it's right here on the Pi 4. So all these different things are useful, for, especially for reverse engineering, but also for inspection. Like on here, if I go in and check this y-axis, I can check the uh, solder balls. If I check this uh, this y-axis here, I can see if I zoom in here and uh, look under which I think this is the Ethernet chip. If I zoom in on it, you can see there are some voids in here. Now, I actually asked Raspberry Pi about this. They said that those voids are within their limits. Uh, you know, it's, it's expected to have some voids in certain chips with certain processes. And as long as it still performs adequately, it's not a problem. Uh, but it is useful to be able to measure that. And LumaField has tools 
that uh, can let you measure it uh, up along here. I'm not going to go into that, but the porosity and cracks and thickness and all that. So cool stuff. Uh, it's cool that we can see inside of these things without having to sand them down by hand. Uh, but there are still there are still plenty of use cases for hand sanding things, and uh, that is still the primary way I've seen people reverse engineer PCBs. But it is neat to be able to see inside without having to hack anything apart. And uh, thank you to Lumafield for that. And thank you to uh, Tube Time and all the other reverse engineers out there who are doing these cool projects. And yeah, I just wanted to get these out there because I don't want to have more and more people reverse engineering things and me have the data that could help them with some parts of it and just not have that released. So anyway, this is the video for that. And level two, Jeff, things are crazy here. No script, no nothing. Just get this stuff out there because it's been a few months and I was like, I'm going to make a full video for this scripted and all that. Not going to do that. I'm just going to post this video up so that I can have the data out there and get back to working on some other things, which will be on the main channel soon.